Hello, my auntie. Welcome again to Mavana Alliance Church Children's Ministry. Today, um, you are having a lesson with Auntie Gugu. And uh, we are going to talk about um, the fruit of the Spirit as we have been speaking about that. And today we are speaking about gentleness. Um, before we begin our lesson, can we just uh, close our eyes and have a short word of prayer? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. And we thank you, my God, that we can come and have your word, my Father. Sit at your feet, Lord. I pray that as we read your word, Lord, and as we listen and as we speak about it, Lord, you will speak to our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, but Auntie, we spoke about the fruit of the Spirit for the, I don't even remember how many weeks now. Um, but we are taking our lesson from Galatians chapter 5 from verse 22 to 23. I hope you, you remember, I'm sure by now you can say it off head. It says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. It produces love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. And today we are doing gentleness. And then next week we are going to do self-control, which is the last fruit of the Spirit. And the Bible says, against this, there is no law. Yes, so that's Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23. And so last week, uh, we had an interlude, you remember? We, were, we watched a video about the story of Peter's denial of Jesus Christ. Um, I just want us to uh, recap a little bit on what we learned last week. Um, so from this video, one of the lessons, key lessons I, I hope you learned, I learned, um, is that we sometimes make mistakes in life and we regret that afterwards. And in this case, Peter was a coward. He couldn't stand up for what was right and he denied Jesus because he was afraid of what could happen to him. But then we see later on in the story that Peter um, goes back and asks for forgiveness from Jesus and Jesus forgives him. And um, that is what we should also do, that when we have sinned and we fall short um, just go to God. His arms are always wide open to receive you as long as you ask for forgiveness. So coming back to today's lesson, we are speaking on gentleness. So I thought in my head, what is gentleness? Um, so I went to the dictionary and I tried to find out what does gentleness really mean? And I found these words. It says it's being kind, it's being tender, it's being mild-mannered. So the, the Bible describes, um, sometimes describes uh, gentleness as meekness. I know it's a word that you don't normally use, but if you read other Bible versions, you'll say you'll find that in place of gentleness, you find meekness. And gentleness as a noun come, is a, um, is an, um, comes from this word adjective, which is uh, gentle. So it describes something. Um, so we say... Um, you are a gentle person. So now when we are describing you, we say you are a gentle person. And the opposite of this, sometimes the words that are used as opposed to gentleness um, are harsh. So you are a harsh person, you are rough, you are hard, you are cruel, you are mean, all those words. So when I think about being gentleness, um, sometimes I think of a baby. So you remember a small baby, oh, they're small and so gentle, or I think of a soft toy, um, some people have cuddle blankets, all those things. They're just nice and soft and tender. Or oh, maybe even a gentle action, if I can think of one. Um, say maybe you have got yourself injured and you think of your mom's hands when they're cleaning your wound because you don't want them to be hard. And so gentle hands, they clean your wounds, they're dressing your wound. You can have lots of, maybe you also have also your own imagination of what gentleness looks like. Um, when I close my eyes and I think gentleness, I see a river gently flowing or a gentle breeze. So this is me. I don't know what, when, what you see when you think about gentleness, but those are the things that I see when I think gentleness. So sometimes gentleness, people mistake gentleness for weakness. Gentleness is not weakness. It is control strength. You can't be gentle if you don't, if you are not able to control your strength. So the people we see as harsh, as rough, as mean, is because they can't control the strength that they have. 
Gentle people are very strong, but they are able to control their strength. And um, um, we are gently when things are okay and everyone is happy. We are gentle even when things are not okay and are not going our way. And sometimes people think that gentleness is a character and they say, I'm not a gentle person. But gentleness isn't a, a character trait. Gentleness is a fruit of the spirit. Because if, if it's a character trait, then you will see that when the person is upset, then they are no more gentle. So gentleness has nothing to do with a person's character, but it is the fruit of the spirit. So it is easy to, to show gentleness if we are thinking gentleness as a character trait when things are okay. But as a fruit of the spirit, now things are difficult. Now you have to show that. Um, so I want us to have uh, remember this memory verse. Our memory verse today is going to be taken from Ephesians chapter 4 verse 2. And in the New Living Translation it reads, Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Let's do that again. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 2. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Yes, so we can't be gentle on our own. But I just want us to remember that, that we learn gentleness from Jesus and then the Holy Spirit helps us to produce gentleness. Okay, so today I want us to look at Jesus as our, as our example. You remember when we started the Fruit of the Spirit um, series, we said that we get this from Jesus. And you know, there is a verse in John 15, you remember that, that verse when Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches, you cannot bear fruit apart from me. So we don't bear gentleness if we are not in Jesus. So if you are looking at Jesus as our, as our example of gentleness, um, let's look at John chapter 8, verse 1 to 11. You will read that on your own later on. But this is a story where there was a woman who sinned, and then these people caught her sinning, and then they brought her to Jesus. They were angry. You know, the law said if a person was found doing that sin, they needed to be stoned and killed. So these guys, they caught her, they have evidence. So they are taking this woman to Jesus. You know, they wanted to stone her. That's the opposite of gentleness. So they were harsh, they were rough, they were cruel. But then when they got to Jesus and they tell Jesus what happened, you know, Jesus, um, the Bible says in the story, he looked down and started writing. And then they wanted Jesus to do something about it. And then Jesus said to them, okay, any one of you here who hasn't sinned, let, let him be the one to throw the first stone. So in this, in, and then we are told that everybody left because everyone full felt they, were, they didn't deserve to um, throw the stone at this woman who had sinned. So from this Jesus' action, we see a gentle Jesus. Jesus who doesn't pay us for the wrong that we have done. This woman knew when she did this sin that she, the, the consequence was that you would be stoned if you are found out. But then that Jesus doesn't give you what you deserve. And Jesus, um, instead of being hard, cruel, and being harsh on you, gives a gentle um, answer to you or shows you gentleness. So there's also another story where we see Jesus' gentleness in the book of Luke chapter 22. Um, and it's, it's in verse 47 to 31. There we see when Jesus was arrested. Um, so that's just before he was crucified. And then they were there in the Mount of Olives. And then this uh, one of Jesus' disciples upset that these soldiers are coming, are coming to arrest Jesus took a weapon, cut off one of the soldier's ears, and we see Jesus gently restoring that ear um, because that is how he teaches us. No matter what people are doing to you, even if it's evil, if whatever it is, but we do not treat people like they deserve to be treated. So we see Jesus in action there showing gentleness. So I want us at Bo Ante to maybe look at practical ways we can show gentleness to others um we show gentleness in thought how we think in words 
and in actions. In Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1, it says, A gentle answer turns away anger, but harsh words make tempers flare. So, in our words, the way we speak to people, we must show gentleness. And in our thoughts, um, um, we it's the way, you know, sometimes you're not able to show gentleness because you think you are better than someone else. Um, so we take a position of humility and we do not think of ourselves as better than others so that we can understand when they are in a situation and we, 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 we look at them and we say, they do not deserve to be treated harshly because that's what we wouldn't want. We wouldn't want that to happen to us. So in your thoughts, when you think about people as better than yourself, you are exercising gentleness and your humility in your head will show in your words. There's also, we can show gentleness in our actions. So if you read Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, it says, we should also restore people gentle and humbly. And someone who has made a mistake, that's what we we, do, we need to do. So if it's your friends, if anyone in your house, if they've done something wrong, restore. The Bible says you should restore them gently and humbly. So in whatever we do in our actions, in everything we do, we must give people gentleness because that is how we have learned from Jesus. So then, for Auntie, just um, a quick wind up and a recap of what we've we've learned today. Um, so we are saying that we need to extend gentleness. People don't deserve it, but we decide because we are Jesus' people and we have the Holy Spirit in us and we ask God to help us to show gentleness and love and kindness to people even if they are difficult and we do not like them actually. Um, but that is what the Bible says we must do. And we must also show gentleness to people who have upset us or even hurt us. Because gentleness is a strength. You are able to control your emotions. You do not just let them go haywire and let you do what, however and whatever. And we must learn from Jesus. So we must always read our Bible and read how Jesus lived. Because in the way he lived shows us how we can live and then we can be gentle with people. So our memory verse again, let us remember that it was from Ephesians chapter 4 verse 2. It says, always be humble and gentle. If you forget everything that I've said, remember that always be humble and gentle with others. Yes, Bo Auntie, I hope you have um, been blessed today. And I pray that you have a lovely week and a lovely Sunday and all the best to those who are writing their exams. Can we close our eyes and thank God for the word. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. I pray that, Lord, as we have read your word and listened to you, oh God, help us to exhibit the fruit of gentleness, God. We meet difficult situations, but Lord, if we lean on you and trust in you, oh God, you will help us to show gentleness, whatever the situation we are in. I pray, God, that you will bless these children, that they will have a lovely week, my God, in Jesus' name. Amen. So, bye, auntie. Bye, and have a lovely week. says to me, tells me that I'm never ever alone, I'm learning how J-E-S-U-S came down to us and gave his best, without a doubt the best friend you'll ever know, our God knows exactly what I need, so I remember this, let's go, when you ask, he cares, when you see, he's there, when you knock, 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 God opens up the door. When you ask, He cares. When you see, He's there. When you knock, 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 God opens up the door. Oh, oh. I'm reading my B I B L E, and this is what it says to me. It tells me that I'm never, ever alone I'm learning how J-E-S-U-S Came down to us and gave his best Out of doubt, the best friend you'll ever know Our God knows exactly what I need So I remember this Let's go! When you ask, he cares When you see, he's there When you knock, knock when you ask, he cares When you see, he's there When you knock, 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 knock God opens up the door
you seek, he's there. When you knock, 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 God opens up the door. When you ask, he cares. When you seek, he's there. When you knock, 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 God opens up the door.